Where do we come from? Why are we here? I mean, what's it all about? Well, we're not going to answer any of those questions. Instead, we're going to be looking at the way mathematics is increasingly being used to find out more about our evolutionary history. And here to help us with that topic is biomathematician Mike Steele. G'day, Mike. How are you? Good, thanks. Hey, look, first thing I wanted to ask you, Mike, was how did you get interested in maths in the first place? Right. Well, I was, I was pretty keen on maths when I was first at university, but yeah, I actually um, uh, gave it up for a while and went and worked as a newspaper reporter for a few years. And yeah, then I, 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 I got inspired by what these guys uh, at Massey were doing, uh, Mike Hendy and Dave Penny. They were using maths to study biology. So I, uh, I went and did a, a PhD with them. And uh, because this field has really just taken off since then, I've never really been tempted to go back and do anything different. So, biomath, biology plus mathematics, that came together, what, 20 years ago or something? Was it, a, a it probably was. I it won't hold you down to it. But <laughs> it, so it sounds a long time ago now, but yeah, you're probably right, yeah. And so, what, what essentially is biomathematics? Can you? Yeah, well, it's, it's using um, maths to study problems in biology, a whole range of problems, you know, ranging from uh, uh, genomic uh, evolutionary studies, the sort of thing that we're working on, to other studies by others in our group at the Biomath Centre. We've got uh, people looking at uh, using uh, calculus type approaches to study uh, how fish populations change over time in the oceans. We've got other people uh, who are looking at uh, processes within the body, biochemical processes. Uh, so there's a whole range of, of applications and, and even in statistical approaches in ecology and looking at invasive species and, and uh, possums and pests and so on. So that helps to control them or is it, I mean, would the fish conserva is that sort of a, has a conservation approach to it yeah. or best way to sort of handle that thing in a, in a sustainable way? That's right. I mean, with mathematical modelling, you can uh, predict what will happen without, you know, waiting until they all go, <laughs> they all vanish and it's too late. So I yeah. think that's, uh, you know, that's, that's a big plus for, for modelling. So you can actually look at it with, with quite a lot of surety with a model about what, what might happen if things stay the way they are in the next 10 yeah, 15 and, and years. I guess more importantly, you, you can adjust the parameters. You can say, well, what, ha what would happen if we did this or if we did that? Or what would be the best strategy to achieve a certain objective? Okay. Uh, are there any other projects at the moment that you're working on that um, are very, very dear to your heart? <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess, I guess most of the work that, that I'm involved with is really using maths to study, uh, you know, genomic data, genetic data. What can we say about the evolutionary history and origins of species, of, of, of diseases like HIV, epidemia, uh, and uh, influenza? Uh, what can we say about uh, some of the early, earliest origins in the tree of life, if you like? Uh, and to really try and make sense of this... Uh, uh, a huge amount of genomic data that's becoming available. So it always also has a sort of a historical aspect to it in terms of, well, it's an evolution. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, some of the time scales you're just looking, in the case of viruses, you're perhaps only looking a few years. Yeah. In the case of uh, mammals, you might be looking back, you know, 60 million years. In the origin of life, you might be going back billions of years. So, you know, it's, it's a real range of time scales there. So, so what's the, the future, do you think, of this particular area of, of you know, biomaths itself? What's oh, the future it's, holding for yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's, of course, it's hard to say, but this area has just exploded in the last decade or so. Mm. There's an area called bioinformatics that has really taken off internationally. Uh, this is really using computer science, mathematics, statistics, working very closely with biologists to look at genomic data, also to look at things like protein folding, which is quite essential if you're trying to design drugs or yeah. understand processes in the body. Uh, and, uh, and there's many other applications, uh, you know, in not just in the medical field, but also in conservation, in trying to measure and quantify you know, how much genetic diversity is being lost as species go extinct and, and how can we best uh, allocate resources to, to preserve uh, you know, biodiversity. Well, it's interesting, I mean, cause from a layman's point of view, you'd never think that mathematics would be something that would be applied to health, to conservation, to, well, yeah. lots of other things that you've been talking about. Yeah, that's true. I mean, at school you learn that, you know, maths is essential mm -hmm. as a tool, say, in physics and the hard sciences. Uh, and uh, you, you don't really get a sense of the applications in biology, but, but, you know, they say biology is the new physics, if you like. It's mm -hmm. the area where nowadays there is a huge amount of interest in trying to apply uh, new mathematical techniques. 
indeed, a lot of physicists um, I've heard are, are moving out of physics and getting into the biology side of things because there's so much scope for doing new work, whereas you know, areas of mathematical physics tend to be very hard. The problems remaining there are not easy ones, if you like. And as a work style, are you pretty much anchored to the office or do you get to travel or how does that work? Uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of travel and we have a lot of visitors that come from the other side of the world to New Zealand in our summer and they come out partly, I suppose, to visit New Zealand but also, um, you know, they enjoy working here and, and no, we don't spend a lot of time in the office. We, we go to, I don't know, cafes and, and so on. Uh, in some ways it's a lot more productive to work there. Yeah. Mathematics in that sense is, is, is excellent because you can somehow do it anywhere. You know, you just need uh, good people, an inspiring location, some paper and pens, uh, maybe a computer, a laptop. Um, ultimately, the, the work you do will end up somewhere in a computer, in a, in a, whether it's a, a research paper or whether it's a computer program that biologists will use. Um, computers are essential, but, but generally we do a lot of our, I guess, um, more creative work out of the office. Mm. Well, look, uh, Mike, you uh, clearly love what you do, and maybe I should have worked harder at maths because then I would travel more. But anyway, thanks very much for talking to us. Okay, today. cheers.